Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I invite you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we're going to make something that most of you are familiar with a holiday dish that everybody loves, lasagna. Everybody's familiar with lasagna, but most people are familiar with lasagna that is made in Naples, which is delicious. It is a layered noodle. The noodles are boiled, and then they are layered with a rich sauce, with meat, with mozzarella, with ricotta, and sometimes even sliced hard-boiled eggs, which uh, cook in the middle of this sumptuous uh, dish and are delicious. The reason why everybody's familiar with the Neapolitan uh, lasagna is because the Neapolitans of, of the immigrants from the different parts of Italy were the first to really open restaurants. And so in general, the kind of cooking that most Americans are familiar with is Neapolitan cooking. But Ours is a regional cuisine, it is not a, a national cuisine, it's a regional cuisine. So if you travel 100 miles in any direction in Italy, you're going to find a lot of variety. So the lasagna that we're going to talk about today and make is Bolognese. Bologna is in the region of Emilia-Romagna, which is above Tuscany. It has one of the most wonderful and rich cuisines. Remember, this is a region that has given us uh, uh, prosciutto, uh, parmigiano reggiano, balsamic vinegar, all things that enrich uh, their, their cuisine. The difference between the Neapolitan version of lasagna and the Bolognese version of lasagna is that the noodles are layered with Bolognese sauce, bechamel, and grated uh, parmigiano reggiano. The recipe for the sauce can be found in this book, The Cooking of Emilia Romagna. And the ingredients are relatively simple. You begin with a combination of butter and olive oil. You add battuto, which is a carrot, an onion, and a piece of celery. To that, you add ground beef. I like a combination of beef, pork, and veal, but you can use one or more of those ingredients. You can use all beef, all veal, all pork, or a combination of the three. Um, to that, you will add white wine, a can of tomatoes, and traditionally, uh, meat broth. And at the end, you will add a cup of heavy cream. That distinguishes the Bolognese sauce from all the other sauces. The only seasoning is salt and nutmeg. Now, nutmeg, of course, loses flavor if you buy it ground. So don't buy it ground, you buy it whole. You buy the nutmeg, it's a nut. And, and I have this ancient little grater that is ancient, but it's still serviceable, and it has, uh, it has a compartment where when you're finished, you put the nutmeg so you could use it the next time. So if the nut nutmegs are bought whole and grated when you need them, you're going to get the most flavor out of them. So we start by chopping the vegetables. I tend to exaggerate the amount of vegetables I put in a sauce because I think back to when our grandchildren were very little and of course they had nothing to do with vegetables. They didn't know that they were eating vegetables every day because I added them to everything. I added them to the soups, I added them to the sauces, and they, they ate their vegetables painlessly. Now actually they're vegetarians and vegans. so. <laughs> Then add your butter and olive oil to your pot. Let it all melt and when it's nice and bubbly, you add the vegetables that you've chopped, the battuto. Stir the mixture, the battuto, until the vegetables are softened and you smell them, the aroma. You know, you cook with all your senses. So when you smell the aroma of these vegetables, chances are that they are done. At that point, you're going to add the meat. Here I am adding the meat to the uh, vegetables and I'm going to use a wooden spoon to break up the meat so that it browns evenly. You, that's important. You don't want big chunks of meat in this. You want it all integrated. 
when the meat is evenly browned and you smell that wonderful aroma is when you add the wine. Remember that you add the wine that you would drink. We do not buy any kind of wine for cooking. Whatever you drink is what you add to your food. So now you stir it so that the alcohol of the wine evaporates and you're ready to add the tomatoes. I buy only Italian peeled tomatoes, ideally San Marzano. These are San Marzano tomatoes. San Marzano is near Naples. It produces the best tomatoes in the world. I buy the peeled tomatoes and then if I want a puree, I will either put them through a sieve or through a mill or put it in a food processor. And so that way you're sure of the quality of the, of the tomatoes. So now we add the tomatoes to the pot, a dash of grated nutmeg, and adding the beef broth. Now I'm letting it come to a boil, so I'm going to cover it and let it simmer for one and a half hours at a low heat. While the sauce is happily bubbling away, we're going to make the bechamel sauce. So we start by placing half a stick of butter in a small saucepan, letting it melt, adding an equal amount, quarter cup of flour. I like to use a whisk because I want a very, very smooth paste. Whisk well, make sure it doesn't, nothing sticks to the bottom. Once you have that very smooth paste, you will begin to add the milk very slowly, very evenly, and whisking continuously. When you have a very smooth mixture, you add salt and pepper to taste and a dash of nutmeg. You continue to whisk until it comes to a boil. Once the bechamel comes to a boil, it is thick and smooth and velvety. At that point, it's done. So traditionally, lasagna bolognese are made with green noodles that are homemade. How do you make green noodles? You add spinach to the dough, and then you roll it out, and you will have green noodles. As a matter of fact, one time we were having a family party, and everybody, uh, potluck, everybody was making something, and I said that I would make lasagna. So the, on the day of the party, I brought my lasagna, put it on the table. One of the people at the table looked at it and said, green noodles, what's that? Well, I explained that they were made with spinach, that they are delicious, and the rule in our family is that you have to try it. If you don't like it, nobody will force you to eat it, but you must try it. Well, it turned out that they loved it, more, you know, more than liked it. So traditionally, the noodles are handmade the same day and made with spinach, but to make this possible for you to do, I'm going to give you some shortcuts in making this dish. And one of the shortcuts is the noodles. The noodles that I use, that I've been using for some time, is a noodle that comes from Italy called Del Verde. And I'll show you what's very nice about it. It's an instant, they call it an instant lasagna. The pieces of noodles are exactly the same size as one of our Pyrex baking dishes. When you're ready to put together the dish, to assemble the dish, I take the noodles, put them in a square pan, one horizontal, one vertical, fill the pan with the very, very hot water from the tap. And let it sit for 15 minutes. That's all the preparation you need to do. The sauce has been simmering for an hour and a half. So here now, I'm finishing up the sauce by adding one cup of heavy cream and stirring it in until it's all completely blended. Here I'm grating the cheese. What I said about the nutmeg holds for the cheese as well. Italians will grate the cheese at the table. Don't buy it already grated. Buy yourself a nice piece of parmigiano, keep it in the refrigerator, and when you need it, you grate it right then and there and you'll get the best, the best flavor possible. Now it's time to assemble this wonderful lasagna. We begin by covering the bottom of the square pan with sauce. We add a sheet of noodle, we add more sauce, 
bechamel on top and grated Parmigiano Reggiano on top of that. And you keep layering until you get to the desired number of layers. When you get to the top layer, use up all the bechamel that's left. And that will uh, give the lasagna a very nice topping. Lastly, if you think that this is gilding the lily, it is. You're going to dot it with the rest of the butter. You take the half a stick of butter that was left over, you cut it into small pieces, and you distribute the pieces on top. This is rich and flavorful. Make sure that when you put the lasagna in the oven that you've got the pan inside a larger pan. So if there's anything dripping, it will not make a mess in the oven. Bake the lasagna in a preheated 375 degree oven, 190 Celsius, for 30 to 40 minutes. Be sure when you take it out of the oven that you let it rest for 15 to 30 minutes. When you're ready to serve the lasagna, be sure that you have some extra sauce in a bowl to pass around at the table. Although the condiment of this dish is plenty, uh, still, some people like extra sauce, so please uh, have some left over and bring it to the table. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you will try making lasagna bolognese. You will not be sorry. You will have some very grateful guests. Buon appetito. Yeah, buon appetito. Buon appetito. Oh, I'm telling you, this is this is a prize winner. Remember to subscribe and tell your friends about Kitchen on the Cliff. <laughs> this is really delicious. Do you remember when we had it at the station in Bologna, hanging out the window, and this nice lady handed us warm lasagna bolognese. I mean, the, this is a magnificent dish. Okay. On a train ride. On a train ride, yes, yes. What do you think, Felice? Well, I love pasta. <laughs> and this lasagna Well, I think, is, is I think this is it's a, actually a very simple. If you really like this dish, you should take a photo of your own lasagna that you made by following this recipe and share it with us on Instagram using the hashtag KOC share with me. All right. <laughs> Buone feste a tutti. Ciao alla prossima volta. <laughs>